So I could tell you a million different stories, or I could tell you the same story a million different ways. I could tell you about the night my boyfriend stood me up for Pamela Anderson, or about the time my girlfriends and I were so wasted one night leaving a nightclub that we stole a street sweeper. And depending on my mood, the audience, and my intention behind telling you this story, I can tell it funny, sad, shameful, even proud. And while the details may vary from story to story, for a long time my opener was always the same. Remember that one time we were wasted? See, I was a raging alcoholic, and thankfully most of it I don't remember. What I do know is this. For me, the key to recovery always comes down to the stories that we tell, and whether or not we choose to focus on the negative or the positive, because it's never what happens to us and always the meaning we attribute to it. So take, for example, if somebody were to tell you that they're getting divorced, is it your instinct to say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry? Or wow, you must be so relieved, right? It's the same event, but a different story. So for me, a long time, the story I told around my addiction was dark and messy and suffocating. And it's true, it caused me and everyone around me an intense amount of pain. Back then, I didn't know that what we resist persists. And so the more I fought against the pain I was in, the more of it I experienced. I was kind of like that cat, like the cute, cuddly one that was just purring and happy all the time. But if that same cat were to get injured and you went to pick it up, it would bite and claw and hiss. I, mean, I was a perfect example that hurt people hurt people. So not only did I have to feel bad about the pain I was causing myself, but also the pain I was causing everyone around me when I would disappear for days and not call. Even now, as I reveal this piece of myself, I can't help but be reminded of the shame I used to feel every second of every day. It's like, why do you drink? Because I'm sad. Why are you sad? Because of what I did when I was drinking, and just around and around it went. I didn't know back then either that there's a major difference between shame and guilt. That guilt says what I did was bad, and shame says I am bad. I felt like I couldn't move past my sins, so I just became them. And speaking of sin, it's interesting, I found out years later, that sin is nothing more than an old archery term that means to miss the mark. So the way I look at guilt now is actually really positive. It's just an internal cue that lets me know the way I'm acting is out of alignment with my true self. That's literally all that it is. It's like, this is who I want to be, this is who I am. Right? And it's that space in between that we call depression or anxiety. But instead of changing my behavior to bridge that gap, I just lowered my standards and expectations so I didn't have to feel so bad about myself. Pretty common coping mechanism. It's not just me, a lot of us do it. For example, if you went out Friday night and you did something you really, really felt bad about, you're actually way more likely to do it again the following weekend because we like to normalize our own behavior. It was just amazing, the pain that I just kept on perpetuating. It's wonderful to be able to look at my experience differently. So some of you have a personal story around addiction. And for those of you that are sitting there thinking, you know, none of this applies to me, like I would never do drugs. You have to remember, it's not just substances that we get addicted to, but also behaviors. Shopping, screwing, eating, working, whatever it is. Because addiction is really anything we do or use compulsively to make ourselves feel better that has negative consequences. Right? That's all it is. To keep it simple, we use for one or two reasons. So to either start feeling something or to stop feeling something. So it can be as simple as I'm going to go get a cocktail after work, right? So I want to start feeling more relaxed or I want to stop feeling anxiety. But sometimes it's so much more. When we don't come from an environment that supports natural feelings of love and connection, we can use substances to manufacture those experiences. And just like somebody might take morphine to help with the pain of a broken leg, somebody else can drink to numb a broken heart. And if we look at brain scans of somebody in intense emotional pain next to somebody that's in intense physical pain, we're going to see the brain light up in the same areas because pain is pain. The only difference is we don't judge the person taking morphine. 
we judge the person using heroin, even though it's essentially the same substance used for the exact same reason. And just like it isn't all about morals and values, it isn't all about genetics either. Thanks to Dr. Bruce Lipton's research, what we know now is this. It's the environment that determines whether or not that gene gets flipped on or off. So for example, if I had three different Petri dishes up here, and each one contained a genetically identical organism, but I put one in intense heat, one in open air, and one in extreme cold, those three identical organisms can become three totally different things. So it's not about the gene, it's about the environment. What that means is you can have somebody that has that addictive gene, but if they don't grow up with abuse and neglect or trauma and they have loving and attuned caregivers, it might never get activated. So it's the environment that really, really matters. I tried to change everything except for that because I didn't want to change what really needed to. I had so much fear about getting better because what would that look like? Who would I be? And most importantly, how would I feel if I lost it? To keep it simple, really trifecta of addiction goes like this. You have somebody genetically predisposed, they have pain and trauma, and then they find something that works at taking away the pain. And if you take the time to really listen to their story, more often than not, your question will go from, how could you be using, to how could you not? Because when someone's in intense pain and they know taking a drink or a hit is gonna make them feel better, it's almost impossible for them not to. It would be like trying to drown yourself. And it's not about the drug anyway. It's about the characteristics and the intention of the person using it. To look at it any other way is the equivalent of saying a deck of cards is responsible for somebody's compulsive gambling habit. We need to focus on the real issue. We villainize substances in this country. But like Dr. Gabor Mate has said, what we need to do is ask what's right with drugs. If we can help somebody identify what's positive about the substance use, we can help them find alternative ways of getting the same experience. Once again, shifting that focus onto the positive. We need to really, really focus on ourselves because the reality is we can take away the substance and that's not treatment. That's a Band-Aid on a compound fracture, right? We need to go down deep within ourselves to the places that we are most terrified to face because that's where healing becomes possible. And it's also the hardest way to get there. I mean, I had searched high and low for the right therapist, drug, relationship, and I only ended up high and alone, finally realizing that nothing outside of ourselves can save us. So it was through the process of healing that I rewrote my story. I let go, and I was carried. And I've really come to a place now where I understand that while addiction almost killed me, it simultaneously saved my life. Because if I hadn't had some way to check out in those darkest times, I'm not sure how long I would have chose to stuck around. So I had to let go. I had to let go of that pain, resentment, all of it. I really did. And just be, and just be here, and feel all of it. So what story do you want to tell? How do you want to tell it? Maybe it's a total rewrite, and maybe it's just some changes to the tone. But what we have to remember is that we may not be able to control everything that happens to us, but we can always control the story we tell around it and choose to seek beauty even in the ugliest of situations. <laughs>